Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic. Welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today we'll be tying a uh, dry fly. Uh, it's a little caddis pattern, just a little guy, um, that I've done quite well with, uh, especially on the rivers in, uh, in BC. Done quite well with this pattern. Um, I tie some with legs, some without legs. This one's going to be no legs. Um, fairly simple pattern to tie. A little, little bit of a trick at the uh, uh, when you put it on the foam at the end, but or near the end. But um, besides that, fairly simple to tie. So without yakking any longer, because it's not the shortest fly in the world, uh, let's get going. So in the vice today, we have a Hens BL354 dry fly hook in a size 10. Um, we're going to be using some uh, Zemper Fly. Uh, sorry, let me get to the sticker there, the Kapok dubbing. Um, and we're going to be using the Olive Dunn, this color right here, Olive Dunn, which is that color. Um, just so you guys know, uh, if people that don't know this, um, Kapok is what it used to be used years and years and years ago in those really heavy duty red life jackets. Um, so this stuff floats forever. That's what it was designed for. Well, designed, it's off a tree. So um, so we'll be using that for the body. Uh, we'll be using uh, some deer hair, some natural deer hair for the, uh, the wing. And then we'll be using some Rainey's uh, sheet foam in orange for a hot spot and an additional float capability. So um, I am going to start off, where's my thread? Uh, there it is. Going to start off white nano silk. Okay. I'm just going to start off right behind the eye. Just as always, just get her, get her all started up. Put a nice base layer down to the bend and back and they can open up on the way back. So now you've got a choice. You can, and I'll, I'm going to do it this time um, with a little rib. Uh, where'd it go? Okay, I dropped it. I dropped my rib. I dropped my rib. I can always cut another piece. Uh, oh, there, there it is. It's the uh, Zemperfly uh, mirror tinsel in antique gold or kind of an orange. Now, the thing with this stuff is be, you have to be really careful with it. It's beautiful stuff but it is very susceptible to tearing if you hit the hook point right so there's a couple of things you can do is one is you just be damn careful <laughs> the other one is you put a tiny piece of foam on the on the tip of the hook and another one is and i just learned this from some other, another gentleman on youtube i don't know we'll see i haven't tried this before so this is a new one for me is just to put a dab of of UV resin right on the top, tip of the hook, just a little dab, and zap it with your light right away. Uh, get it right onto that tip. No, that didn't. That didn't hold because you can always peel this off, right? Ah, you bugger! So it helps. That's what happens when you're half blind. I don't know if I actually got that tip or not. No, I didn't. I don't know. Maybe it's not easy as uh, as I was told it is. Maybe I got it. Well, actually, you know what I can do is this. I'll put that on. This is an experiment while I'm doing a video. <laughs> I'm just gonna tilt this. Let this flow down to the tip. Tilt it. Come on, slow down. Keep my thread out of the way. Where's my bodkin? Oh, maybe I can help force it down towards that tip. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if that works or not. If it doesn't, it's really irrelevant. I, I do this uh, tip. I do this uh, this fly with and without um, the rib, so uh, I think the tip is still exposed there, but whatever. Experiment. So again, just going to... I have a little bit of... This one actually turned out to be a little bit of a mess, but we'll see. It should be okay still. So I'm just going to counterclockwise spin my thread a little bit. Now I'm going to get my kapok dubbing and this stuff you just need to take a little bit off at a time and dub it on 
it is amazing how well it dub <laughs> if you don't have UV all over your fingers um, it's amazing how well it dubs on um, and you can get it nice and thin which then you can control your your body might nicer right if it's nice and thin because you just do a couple of wraps over top of each other if you want it thicker but if you want it thinner there you go it's already thinner right so shorten myself up right back to where I started there tighten that up a bit so I do want a bit of a body on this like a thick thickener thicker body um, this capoc will help it float like you wouldn't believe so and of course there's a piece of deer hair stuck in there from my I always do a uh, not a practice but a test fly before I do my actual fly um, just so I know that I have all the materials out that I need and so on right so let's build that up just a little bit tighten that up now a little bit more and uh, yeah so there's a bunch of bunch of deer hair laying down here I hate using deer hair to be honest it's great material but I just I hate the mess that it makes there's one of my favorite flies to fl fish with in the in the lakes is the deer hair gomphus but it's probably the one of the only flies that I will not tie I just refuse and not that I can't I used to it's just what a mess right and I just I yeah, screw it <laughs> I just for the two bucks or three bucks I'll just go and buy them besides I've got quite a few other floating style dragonfly patterns that I have come up with over the years that I like better anyway. So, okay, now let's see if I can do this without tipping that, that tip of that hook. It just gives a little bit of a segmentation look, it gives a little bit of that shine coming in, right? That, that mirror tinsel, right? So, it's not 100% necessary. I could have used wire as well, but I don't like using, if possible, don't like using wire in in any f of my dry flies, if possible. I'm just going to nip that off because that's a piece of deer hair. Get that out of there. Yeah, right. um, I don't like using uh, um, sorry, wire, any kind of weighted object for uh, my my dry flies so now I'm gonna take a piece of the rainy sheet foam and get my scissors and I'm just gonna cut a about a quarter of an inch wide sliver off of here so that's what I've come up with okay then I'm just gonna just cut a, a taper into one end here three sides I just cut three sides one side I'll leave flat that's the flat side that's gonna lay against the uh, the hook okay so now it's gonna be tied in backwards so it's gonna tie in like that get that nice and tight in there and then make sure it's sitting right on top then I'm lifting up to see where my eye is so now I can go back over and that's nice and tight against the eye there that's what I want so now I can tie that rest down there we go okay so now I'll take some deer hair and I don't know it's uh extreme winter time here in Alberta right now we're minus 35 every day and uh, everything's full of friggin static I can't leave my deer here I can't even drop it into my stacker properly so static guard to the static guard to the rescue the, the patch of deer hair just a slight um, spray and same with my tool I'm gonna let it dry 
and then it's not staticky anymore. So I'm just stacking my hair right now, lining up those tips. So I'm just gonna grab my deer hair. I'm gonna pull out. I'm gonna pull out all the under fur. See, all the under fur. I'm just pulling it out. If there's anything underneath there. Now with this, I'm going to actually come back to my the back of my tie-in point here. And I want it about as long as my... There's a couple of butts that are sticking that way. Uh, about as long, if not just slightly longer than, than my uh, hook. Loose wrap, loose wrap, and tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. Okay. Take all your... And this is why I don't like deer hair. The mess that it makes now. Trimming. And just trim off all your butt sections. Get that all cleaned up. Sometimes, like I was just doing there, you can actually pull them off. And if you don't get them all, it's not a huge deal. Um... If you get too many, not a huge deal. Just uh, sometimes this takes a little bit of time and patience. Something I'm not the greatest at, especially the patience part. Especially when I'm doing videos for you guys, I get a little impatient because I try to keep them under 15 minutes, 17 minutes because for the YouTube algorithms and stuff, the, they don't get viewed as much when they're over that, depending what they are, right? So, just getting that last little butt section that's in there. Come on, there you go. Okay, <clears throat> so that's tied on. I'm just gonna make sure that's all tied down really nice. Get that really good in there. Okay, good, 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 okay, now a little bit more cap -lock. So this cap -lock dubbing, if you guys have never used it, go out and get some, I tell you, this stuff just, it just, it's ridiculous how much it's, how much this floats. So now, I know it's counterintuitive because I put the uh, cap, the dubbing on, but now I'm going to come back, I'm going to fold over my foam, and then I'm just going to, about there. I don't want to be all the way back up against the, uh, the deer hair, because if I am all the way against the deer hair, it'll actually flatten it, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Because I I do I did tie one on purpose that's tied all the way back and it really flattens this deer hair out. So so now that that's secured in, I'm just gonna take my scissor and I'm gonna cut it about. Actually, I'm gonna use my straight scissor. Otherwise, I end up getting a taper. Just leaving a little stick up. Then my. Whip finisher, in there and whip finish. And like I said, sometimes I'll put legs on right here. I'll put one set of legs on either side. Um, sometimes it, uh, like there's little rubber legs. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. It depends what you want. Um, I'll also, um, before I tied the, uh, the deer hair in sometimes I'll tie in a little bit of CDC as well there so nip that off take a little bit of my sallies and just put it right on the underside there on the foam on the sorry on the tie-in point the knot right on the foam as well just get it in there Dunsky, 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 like dinner. That's it. So now you can pry that up a bit, lift these hairs up, and then they'll stand up a bit more. 
See, and the last one that I tied on purpose, like I said, I tied it too far back on purpose. You see how much more this sits flat? Here, I'll take it out, put it in there. See, this one sits more a lot flatter on the shank. And even if I lift it, it'll stay, it'll come back down. That's because I tied it too far back with the head. So, yeah, that's it. It's a, it's a like I said, it's a fairly simple fly, except for, you know, sometimes people can have a little bit of problem with that foam. Um, but that's that's about it right there. And then, you, like I said, you can now put, uh, you could have, put, I could have put a set of little rubber legs on there. Um, I can also take my, my dubbing brush and just just really lightly actually I'll use my other dubbing brush where I put it right there my stone full one it's nice and skinny and I can actually get in there and just pull some of that catwalk out a, just a little bit just to make it scruffier uh, it it doesn't get like like your ice dubbings and stuff where it'll flow but it'll get a little scruffier right so as long as you don't get do what I just did and get all the hairs all over the place so yeah so you can just get in there and just get a little scruffier a little more buggy looking that's about it right so up to you but like I said this stuff floats forever and then having the deer hair which floats forever and then having the foam which floats forever um, these things just they you, you can't drown them um, they just lot they just stay up forever um, and then, like I said they're a fairly simple tie um, and then if you want to have the little legs sticking out, you can do that too and then make it almost like a stone fly kind of. Um, and then let's just see, because this is, like I said, this is an experiment for me too. Let us see if that comes off fairly easy. Yeah, not bad, but I don't know if I'd continue do that again. Um, I think I'd just rather just be careful and not hit the tip, you know, so, but uh, just because... I found that a bit of a pain in the butt. Now, maybe I wasn't doing it right. Like I said, I've never done it before. It's just I had that comment on one of my things, one of my videos before. So, alrighty. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Give her a thumbs up if you did. Uh, tight lines, everyone. And uh, spread the word about my channel if you like it. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, do another giveaway once we hit 2,000 members. So, tight lines. Oh, if I can find the mouse, there it is. <laughs>